has said he will use the subpoena power to investigate this administration. You have said on my program to me that you want to see the Democratic members of Congress investigated by the media, you put it that way. You wanted us to investigate the Democrats for un-American attitudes. I just want to ask you, do you stick with that plan? Do you want us to do it, or will you do it with the subpoena power? Who do you want to investigate the Democratic members of Congress for un-American thinking? Well, the plan that I've been talking about all through this election is really four things, and I would encourage the new Republican leadership to take this on as the agenda in 2011, and it's very simple. It's keep the current tax policy so no one has increased taxes. Number two, we need to put a full-scale repeal of Obamacare, pass through the House, hopefully it can get through the Senate, and then number three, we need to make sure that we secure the United States borders, and number four, we need to make sure that we don't have a huge increase in national energy tax. Those are the four issues that the American people want the Congress to deal with because they want to get certainty back into the economy. Right. What this election shows is that people believe in this country. They love free enterprise. Right. They love capitalism. Are you, are you, sure that we have jobs going forward. Let me That's ask you, Congresswoman. Congresswoman Bachman, are you hypnotized tonight? Has someone hypnotized you? Because no matter what I ask you, you give the same answer. Are you hypnotized? Has someone put you under a, a trance tonight? Then you give me the same answer no matter what question I put to you. I think I think the American people are the ones that are finally are speaking tonight. We're coming out of our trance. Really, we're coming out of our nightmare. Okay, so well. I, I think people are thrilled tonight. I, I imagine that thrill is probably maybe not quite so tingly on your leg anymore. I know you sure get to that. that. Your sign holder has already raised that issue. Well, someday we'll have you on the show again and we'll get to the investigations. But congratulations. I know you will never be defeated on your philosophy, which is to investigate everyone for everything. Which is free markets and embrace okay. the principles mm. of our founders. Okay, thank you very much, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, who uh, seems to be in a trance, but thank you. Back to you, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Between the trance wow. and the tingle, I, I feel like... No, it's I, not a tingle. That's their word. I when did this broadcast I never used that get word. physical? I that's what I want to know. I 2006. Never so, <laughs> let, I mean, let's, can we talk for a second about what they're trying to do there? With that sign, they're trying to say MSNBC is in the tank and NBC, no, no, no. NBC they're, is in they're, the tank. Let me, let me get back that's to this. That's what they're trying to say. That's, that's an hominem. Back during uh, mm -hmm. the 2004 uh, Democratic Convention in Boston, when... Barack Obama gave an inspiring speech about America and what America is capable of. And I wish he'd get back to talking about our country mm -hmm. and that adv exceptional aspect of this country. You can actually come here and become an American no matter what your background. That wonderful aspect that a lot of people believe in about our country as the wonderful aspect of our country that is exceptional. Something Senator Rubio I was, I was, just talked I was, about. I was thrilled by that and I said so. And uh, physically thrilled. When people talk about this country, I do it that way. I am in, in overwhelmed by this country. They're making fun of me, fine, for saying that. I can live with that. The important question is that Michelle Bachman has become a very successful sort of troubadour for the Tea Party by going around and making these extreme statements. On our program, she said she thought her colleagues right mm -hmm. across the aisle should be investigated McCarthy style for anti-American attitudes. That was a strong statement. It's, she either means it or she doesn't or she's irresponsible. I've just tried to, I tried to hold her account to that, and, and she didn't answer the question, and she did seem trance-like there. Every question I put to her was almost irrelevant to this sort of a thing she was talking, this talking directly, points. moronically looking directly at the camera and repeating over and over again the same words. I think you did give her the benefit of the doubt with the word hypnotized, and we'll leave it there. Uh, okay. We have a call to make on the Colorado governor's race. Before we go to break here, uh, an important one with uh, Governor Ritter retiring there, John Hickenlooper, the mayor, the popular mayor of Denver has uh, withstood challenges from a Republican uh, candidate and an independent candidate, and you will notice that Tom Tancredo, the independent, uh, appears to be in, or is in second place uh, with uh, more than a third of the vote in. He will finish ahead of uh, Dan Mays, who accused uh, then-Mayor Hickenlooper of leading to uh, the uh, uh, possible UN takeover of the city of Denver uh, via 
bicycles. Depending on how Dan Mays does in that race, the D Republican Party in Colorado may be reduced to, lo to minor party status and yeah. lose their uh, mm -hmm. top one of their top two lines on the ballot. All right, we, we, we're going to run the gauntlet. You, you just finished with Congresswoman uh, uh, Bachman. We're now joined by uh, the member of the new, uh, as we expect, and the NBC News projection uh, continues to be, the new Republican majority in the House of Representatives, uh, the man who has been the minority whip, Eric Cantor of Virginia, who joins us now. And uh, I'll just, uh, I'll throw out the easiest of questions. Uh, first off, Congressman, uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> well, first of all, it's good to be on. It's good to be on MSNBC on a night like this. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're, look <laughs> we're, we're, we're I get really your point. looking. <laughs> exactly. Chris, that was for you. Uh, yeah. th we, are, we are really looking forward to getting down to work. I mean, come on. The American people have spoken loud and clear tonight, and they've said, you've not listened, Washington. You know, there's been 20 months of policies that just have not produced the results that have been promised. Uh, and it's up to us as Republicans, if we're lucky enough to solidify the gains that we've already experienced tonight, uh, when we assume majority, uh, to do just that, and that is to focus on the question that most people are looking at as to why people are out of work and we've got to go about doing that in in a fiscally limited in a fiscally disciplined uh, like manner to make sure that we are focused on what people care about that that's what tonight is really all about Congressman Cantor, it's Rachel Maddow here. Thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight. Every uh, Republican that we've talked to tonight about the agenda uh, for the new Congress, if Republicans are taking control of the House, has mentioned tax cuts, extending all of the Bush tax cuts. That means that the difference between the Democrats' proposal on tax cuts and the Republicans' proposal on tax cuts is about $700 billion worth of tax cuts for the richest people in the country. Do you think that that $700 billion should be added to the deficit? If you don't, what will you cut to compensate for that money, that loss in revenue. Rachel, first of all, let's set the record straight here. There is no tax cuts. Nobody's getting a tax cut. Come January 1st, if nothing's done, one of, one of, one, well, listen, even if it is, if, if January 1 comes, one of two things is going to happen. Either your tax rates go up or they stay the same. There's no tax cuts. When so the let's Bush set tax that cuts were passed straight. initially, they were set to expire in 10 years. So the tax cuts that Bush passed, that were passed under the Bush administration, were set to expire there's, this year. So if we're going to have new tax cuts, they will be new ones because these ones will a, go there's, away. There's, there's, there's no tax cuts. If you're, if you're a small business person or even a working family, if you are somebody at the lowest uh, spectrum of the income level, you're going to receive a tax hike if nothing is done right now. That's really where people are, Rachel. And so if we're looking at it and we say we want to create jobs, because that's what this election's about, is why are so many people out of work? Why isn't Washington doing something? I don't think many Americans are going to agree that raising taxes right now is the prescription we need when you're looking to the small businesses and the private sector okay. to create those jobs. The difference, that's where we're coming the from. The difference between, I'm trying to get to the difference between what Democrats are proposing and what you're proposing, though. Democrats are proposing proposing either an extension of the tax cuts or new tax cuts, whatever you want to call them, for everybody except the highest earners. The difference in revenue that that's going to mean is about $700 billion. Should that be added to the deficit? The difference is, and the question is, Rachel, who pays for it? Yeah. Do, you want, do you want the taxpayers, the small businesses paying for it? Uh, by, by raising taxes, or do you want Washington to finally come up with ways to cut this budget deficit? And you ask us how we're going to cut the deficit? Well, you know, Republicans, we've already put on the table $350 billion worth of cuts. First of all, we start by getting there and saying we're going to reduce discretionary spending back to 08 levels. That'll produce $100 billion in the first year. It'll get close to a trillion dollars over the 10-year budget window. You know, these are things that we can do. We know in the sun rose and set. Nothing stopped here in this country. So we've got to get back to focusing on what families and small businesses across this country are doing, and that is tightening the belt, trying to live within our means. And it's high time that Washington do that, and that's the, that's the approach that I think this Republican majority is going to take. All right, so okay. it will be added to the deficit. Thank you, Congressman. You're going to have to loosen Kander. the belt before you tighten it. As you know, you and the Republican leadership in the House, Speaker Boehner, are going to have have to bring up an increase in the debt ceiling to be voted on by your membership. Uh, John Boehner tonight has told the Tea Party, quote, I'll never let you down. Do you think the Tea Party will feel let down when you and John Boehner move to raise the debt ceiling next year? 
<laughs> look, right now what the people are saying, including the folks in the Tea Party, is get your business straight, Washington. Start listening to us and start demonstrating the kind of fiscal I'm discipline. An and, oh, and oh, wait, I'm going to give, give you an answer. I'm going to give you an answer. And start demonstrating the fiscal discipline that we expect of our federal government and most especially the Republican Party. You're going to raise the we're debt gonna ceiling. Have, we're going to have the, at least. You're going to let the country crash. We're going to have at least three or four months here to demonstrate that we're about fiscal discipline, cutting spending, going about the things that Americans want, which is to bring government back into and its rightful place and balance with the And then you're going to raise the debt ceiling the or let the sector. country crash. Okay. No, no, listen, we, we've got three or four months until that gets here. And you so know you what? won't answer any and questions about the debt ceiling until one minute to midnight listen, when you have to listen, raise it? Listen, once again, the message we heard tonight was, you know, Washington, start listening to us. We want to see jobs right now. Okay. We want to see some certainty. You've got a government that's out of control, and we want to see Who's going to be the leadership representative again. of the Tea Party? Who in your leadership will represent the Tea Party? Michelle Bachman has said today she would like to be in that leadership representing the Tea Party. Can she have your job? Whose <laughs> job should she take <laughs> to represent the Tea Party Listen, accurately since you guys don't seem to be very well connected with them at this okay. point? You, you know what? If, if you go out and you talk to the, mem the members of the Tea Party like I have, you'd understand these are people that are focused on trying to get America back on track. This is not some group of fringe individuals. These are the tip of the spear that reflect the frustration that most independents have in this so country happy. towards Washington right now. We're spending money we don't have. We're producing no results. We keep making promises and not keeping them. That's the frustration. That's what the Tea Party is about. They've been a very positive Im influence on the debate surrounding this election. And I believe when Republicans regain majority in January, you will see a very disciplined <laughs> crowd going about trying to do the things that are required right now, producing results, getting people back to work. Uh, last year, uh, the Republicans uh, criticized the Democrats in the House for not passing the first budget resolution. So and I have a lot of respect for your leadership in this regard. You are, are you going to commit tonight to actually passing a budget resolution, which you criticized the Democrats for not doing last year? Absolutely. Will you commit to that? Uh, there will be a budget Chris. resolution passed by the House Republican majority. A absolutely, okay. Chris. You know, th th this is something that this is the first time since the Budget Act was passed in the early 70s that the House of Representatives did not I agree with you pass a budget resolution. That was it's a failure on their part. You're right. I hope you guys absolutely. deliver. Thank you. Congressman Cantor, thank you for your time. It's been, uh, it's been fun. I think you'll agree with that. Thank you, sir. Uh, again, a pleasure to be on MSNBC tonight. I'm sure you feel that way. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and, please come uh, back. And, yeah, indeed. Uh, uh, the, the irony, though, of the phrase. Well, wait, 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 I wanted wait, wait. to come back if he's not going to answer. No, questions. but I was just going to say the irony. I mean, this is ridiculous. Lawrence. A guy like that comes on and just spins those talking points, doesn't answer a D single D question. D was there some new irony not added to the meaning of the phrase that he used there? Washington is not listening to us. Did you not get that feeling from here? <laughs> uh, each time we've tried to ask Congressman Blackburn, Congressman Bachman, mm -hmm. now uh, 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 currently Minority Whip Cantor. Each time we've asked for specific answers, we have gotten platitudes because Washington is not listening no, to us. No, it's one of them we got hypnosis. That's right, you got, her, you got the... <laughs> I really believe that she was hypnotized. Uh, she was paying... There was no affect to her as she was answering the questions. It was just a continuous... She was worried about those signs being placed correctly. That's what they call on message, Chris. It's a <laughs> standard <laughs> political posture. She I know. was on message. I've but, seen right. plenty of candidates. We have to be on message and, 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 and take commercial messages, believe it or not. We, we'll resume the role of, uh, discussion of the role of hypnotoad uh, in the this campaign in a moment, but first, <laughs> we're still waiting for the results. Something to guide you out of Nevada. It was too early to call when the polls closed 27 minutes ago. As well as Pennsylvania, Illinois, Wisconsin, Colorado. Our uh, special election coverage will continue. What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> I was just hoping something toad. about Nevada was going to come out. Yeah, no, sorry, <laughs> nothing yet. Know. Stay with us after this break. I have something about Nevada or toads or polls. <laughs> The Place for Politics 2010, brought to you by the 100% electric, no gas Nissan Leaf. Innovation for the planet, innovation for all. electric Nissan Leaf. Innovation for the planet. Innovation for all.
Hey, Barnes, my parents want to talk to you. Oh, so what? Uh, they don't really think you're an exchange student. What? They think you're a businessman using our house to meet new clients in China. For reals, player? They overheard a phone call. Something about shipping with FedEx to Shanghai, and then you opened a bottle of champagne. That was for a science project. I'm late for soccer. We got done. Rehearsal. You and I are cool. I'll be home by curfew. We understand. You need a partner who can help you go global. FedEx. At first, sure, they couldn't do enough for me. If anything, it was a little too much. But the moment they had my 